You can pick your spouse. You can pick your home. But you can't pick your neighbors. I could never stomach Adams. He didn't even look like an Adams. And he was so condescending. Once I saw the inside of his house, when I went to talk to Lynn about a break-in down the street, and it was full of weird, perverted art that quite honestly would creep anybody out, not just me. But what are you gonna do? Neither of us was gonna move. So the years went by with Adams and I just kind of staying out of each other's way. Until one day I come home from work to find Adam standing in his underwear in my kitchen. What do I do? Politely ask him to explain what he's doing in my kitchen, in his underwear, facing in the direction of my kid's room? No, I do what any normal father would do. I wonk him. You, you sick. If you ever again, I swear to God, I don't even know what to say. You miserable fuck. Where's Brian? Backyard. Did he touch you? Who? What, I wonked him. God, yeah. uh, and then what? Well, I mean, he went down. Yeah? And then he gets back up again. Okay. So I wonked him again. Jesus, Roger, I mean, what if he was just sleepwalking? What, what does that matter? Ooh. Next time he could be sleep raping. Ew, okay, well then what? Well, then, then I rolled him down the front steps into the muck. Should have seen his face, it was all mucked up. Oh my God. Wow, Roger, that is, um, that's... Oh, God, it's, this, this isn't who I am. I don't want to go around just wonking people. I know, Roger. But what do we do? Upshot was, keep the doors locked. And if he's home, the kids stay inside. This is Pinky. He's a male. He's a very loving cat. I got to thinking. Guy comes in in his shorts, and I'm sitting here taking this? This is love? Love for my kids? Because what if? What if we slip up? What if a kid gets out or he gets in? No. No, no, not acceptable. Where is he? Upstairs, why? Yeah, at least I had pants on. I am what I am. Oh my God, you're admitting it. 
Roger, hey! He, he admitted it! What are you doing in our bedroom, Roger? Why don't you ask him what he was doing in my kitchen in his underwear looking in the direction of my kid's room? As if him admitting it wasn't horrifying enough, he starts rising up. Which killed me. Him rising up against me? As if he's the one who was right? So to walk him again, I had to like shove her back. And unfortunately, she slipped, which, believe me, I, I felt genuinely bad about. But now he's mad. Mad at me. Him in his underwear, facing my kid's room, and he's mad at me? Many a night, I'd heard assorted wonks and baps from Adam's house with her gasping, Frank, Jesus, I'm a woman. You're hurting me because that's the kind of guy he is. So I walked him again. Look, I didn't want to push her down, but I had to. Not in a mean way, just in a, like, stay there way. Which is when, of course, just my luck, kids came running in. These Adams kids, I should say, are little thespians, constantly doing musicals in the backyard. Let it go! Can't hold it back! Et cetera, et cetera. So they're, you know, all dramatic. Mommy! Daddy! The fuck are you doing, Mr. Durfee? Why don't you ask your dad, Nate? So I shoved my way out. Not rough, very gentle. I felt for them, having on more than one occasion heard Adams wailing on them, too. She bit me really hard. And to be bitten like that by a little kid who I watched grow up right next door kind of hurts my feelings. But, but hey, she's out of it. She doesn't know what's what. So I give Adams this little proxy wonk in exchange for the biting. Then I needed some air, so I walked around the block, but still, it wasn't sitting right. Yeah, because now it begins, you know? Adams is over there pissed off, saying all these false things about me to those kids and due to what they had seen, the walking and what they had not. Adams in his underwear facing my kids' room. They're probably swallowing every mistruth. And so I'm like, great, now they hate me. Like I'm the bad guy in all this. And all summer, it's gonna be pranks. It's gonna be my hose slit. It's gonna be syrup in my gas tank. You know, or all of a sudden my, my dog has a burn on his belly. No, unacceptable. So, I take action. Listen, and all night long, it was call after call for the neighbors. You know, call the cops. We don't need to call the cops right now. That's why I put the, the flyers out. He needs help. I'm giving him help. He's a goof. Yeah, but a lot of harmless goofs ended up being uh, harmful. I saw him walking his dog in the middle of the night. No, a lot of times he isn't walking the dog, though. He's just walking around at night. Which, why do you got to do that around here? Do not lose your cool. You know, that sort of thing. In control. I will stay in control, okay. Which is all well and good. I mean, they've got a right to their opinions and all, but then I go out for a smoke around midnight. And what is he looking at? Their houses? Ha, don't kid yourself. What? I am what I am. You fuck. So I run over there to walk him again, but he oh. kind of scurries back inside before I can get there. Well, we should call the cops. We, we should have no, called the cops yesterday. We, no, we yes, we should have. We, we talked about this. They they can't do anything, all right? <sighs> Especially since, you know, we went over there and wonked the shit out of him. Well, maybe stop going over there and wonking the shit out of him then. Oh, okay, fine. All right, fine, fine. Fine? But it wasn't fine. Why not, Dad? You know very well why not, champ. 
Then Monday morning, I see Adams walking towards his car. I thought maybe he'd come to his senses and apologize, but instead, he gives me that smoldering look again. Never have I received such a hateful look. All day, that look was in my mind, that look of hate. And I thought, that was me? If I had that hate level, what would I do? Well, one thing I would do is hold it in and hold it in. And then one night it would overflow and I would sneak into the house of my enemy and stab him and his family in their sleep or shoot them. I would, you would have to, it is human nature. I'm not blaming anybody. I thought I have to be cautious and protect my family or their blood will be on my hands. I came home early, went over to Adam's house. I knew nobody was home. Whatever qualms I had about breaking into Adam's house went away quick because he had a lot of knives. Literally everywhere you turned, there were more knives and they were really sharp. Plus even the not sharp ones had to be removed because he had the means to sharpen them. And then there was his basement, which was even worse. Chisels and saws and screwdrivers, each more lethal than the last. Weird double-sided Chinese kung fu saws that are clearly designed for more than building a spice rack on the weekend. And he had a scythe. Who, besides the Grim Reaper, has a scythe? Adams, that's who. And yes, there were deadly spiders too. My first instinct was to crush it. But then I realized, hey, this spider isn't like Adam's. It doesn't have free will. It's not its fault it's a spider. So I did something a guy like Adam's would never do. I let it be. That night, I slept better until I woke in a sweat asking myself what I would do if someone came in and after shoving down my wife and one of my kids, stole my knives and chisels as well as my dog-shaped book and what I would do is I would search through my house in a frenzy for other harmful substances. I'd paint for thinner household chemicals and I would ring the house of my enemy with the toxics and I would set them on fire or else I would, I would dump them in his pool so that it would, one, rot the lining and two, sicken his children while they swam. Mm. Brian and Melanie, oh my God, nowhere are their kids as sweet as my kids. And standing there in my pajamas, thinking of Adam standing there in his underwear. Imagine my kids choking and vomiting, I thought. No way, I am not living like this. Once again, my instincts were right on the money. Adams had can after can of lethal chemicals and toxics. It took a while to gather them up, but I worked with stealth and efficiency. His poisons filled several extra large garbage bags. And they were heavy, but the way I looked at it, I was doing Adams a favor by neutralizing his ability to escalate the conflict. <laughs> what did I get in exchange for my peaceful attempt to disarm him? A vicious physical attack. The whole family descending on me like wild animals. And as they wailed away, I realized they were actually trying to kill me. Make no mistake, they are going to kill me. And if they kill me, no more little Melanie and me eating from the same popcorn bowl. No more little Brian doing that wrinkled brow thing we do back and forth when one of us makes a bad joke. Never again Karen and me lying side by side afterward, looking out the window, discussing our future plans as those yellow beaked birds come and go on the power line. Ah! 
I struggle to my feet, thinking, forget how I got here. I am here. I must get out of here. I have to live. So I begin to walk like I've never walked before. Walking like my life depended on it. Because it did. of toxics and made for the light at the top of the stairs where I knew the door was and the night was and my freedom and my home. It's okay. It's okay. We're, we're safe. We're safe.